And did a man die because a train was blocking his route to the hospital? A new call tonight for someone to figure out this problem in Woodhaven. Thanks for being with us for the news at six. When every second counted, the ambulance rushing one man to the hospital had to stop and wait 20 minutes for a train to move on. He didn't make it, and now his family is speaking out about the issue of trains in Woodhaven blocking the roads there. The trouble spot is the tracks that cross Allen Road just north of Van Horn. Sean Lay is live where officials are calling this a public health hazard. Sean? They most certainly are. Kimberly, the last train that went through about an hour ago, we timed out blocking the road here at about seven minutes and 30 seconds that drivers had to wait or create a hazard by turning around on Allen Road and heading back south for a detour. One man says his father was in a medical emergency this time last year. He was delayed 20 minutes getting through because of a train. Now his son is saying that something has to be done about these train troubles here. Uh, he fell, lost his balance, fell, hit his head. It was last spring Robert Ellison's 82-year-old father, Arvid, suffered that fall. The ambulance his father was in was stuck for 20 minutes in Woodhaven, waiting for a train that was blocking the road. Needless to say, he didn't make it. Uh, had we been able to get there sooner, it's highly possible he might still be with us today. The issue of trains blocking Van Horn, Allen, and Fort each day for extended periods of time has reached a boiling point for the 500,000 people who live downriver. Last week, it cut the city in half. All crossings were tied up for three hours. Woodhaven's mayor is urging Wayne County, who is in charge of the road, to help find funds to build an underpass here, even putting up signs for people to call the county. I don't know what it's going to take. I truly have tried everything I possibly know to get this project done. Police used to ticket the trains, but now the trains are protected by law and police and EMS are the ones who have to find ways around them. Well, we do have a level two trauma center uh, right in our neighboring city, which is, which is great. Um, yeah. It's great for our residents, uh, great for the downriver uh, citizens. However, sometimes we, we don't have access to it. And that's frustrating. Again, it almost seems deliberate. They're they're blocking these roads for ridiculous amounts of time every day. Well, he's talking about CN, the rail company that uses these rails, blocking off these roads at different times during the days. We had long conversations with CN today, and said they said, look, they're loading cars down here in Woodhaven with vehicles, uh, with goods and services to keep the economy in this area moving. But they also say they are trying to keep the delays to a minimum. They said they also want to be a partner in finding a solution here, uh, trying to work with the local governments to finding out you know, how they can limit these or find another way around the uh, issue. Issue here. Back to you. Yeah. So, Sean, what would it take to get an underpass there? Yeah, tw uh, thirty-two million dollars. Mm. Woodhaven is seventeen million short right now. That's why they're really speaking out today, saying they need to go to Wayne County and they need Wayne County government's help, not just in finding some money here locally, but finding some grant money in Washington to get that underpass here to bypass this problem once and for all. Yeah, a lot of money. All right, Sean.